Hello friends, welcome to Inside Text. This is a platform to learn about power transmission elements damage control system. So friends, continuing in the current transformer testing series, in today's video we are going to learn about current transformer knee point test. So there are various tests that are performed on the current transformer before the commissioning of CT is done. So some of the tests are as mentioned over here, CT polarity test, ratio test, knee point test and 10 delta test. Also we take IR value test for the CT. So in today's video we will be learning about knee point test. So first of all, let us understand what is the requirement to perform this test, uh, what all equipments will be required. So we will require a 0 to 230 volt variac, a voltage transformer that is converting 230 to 2 kV, then extension wires, clip-on meter and a voltmeter or a multimeter. So friends, uh, we have to understand few basics first. So let us understand what is a knee point. So knee point is the voltage at which the CT core will start to saturate. Okay, so beyond this voltage, beyond knee point voltage, the CT core will start to saturate. That point at which it starts to saturate is called knee point. So what is the importance of this knee point is that for the CT, we have PS core that is used for special protection like differential relay or distance relay. So what happens if, if the voltage goes beyond this knee point voltage, then the accuracy of this PS core will be, uh, will be misbehaving or you can say accurate results will not be obtained beyond the knee point voltage. And it is very important because the, we require a very high accuracy for PS core in the CT. Now let us understand through a graph what is a knee point and how the knee point voltage actually is. So uh, you can see in the graph, the graph is showing the secondary voltage versus excitation current. Okay, so as you can see, this kind of graph is obtained and this point is called the knee point. And the voltage over here is called as knee point voltage. Beyond this, if the voltage is increased, then you can see that excitation current is increasing very fast and the current will be very high. So in this region, it is called a saturation region. The excitation current will be very high and it can damage the core of the CT. Okay, so this is the importance of knee point and knee point voltage. Also, we have ankle point over here. So this ankle point is used in the for the metering core. Okay, and knee point is very important for PS core that is special protection core. So as you can see over here, this is the nameplate detail of a current transformer CT. So it is having four cores. Okay, and this VK indicates the knee point voltage. It comes for the special protection core only. So that is 950 volts for this particular CT. And IEX is the excitation current at which above that much current should flow up to this knee point voltage. If any currents flow higher than this, then it may saturate the CT core. So the value over here is 60, 60 volts at the sorry, 60 milliamperes at VK by 2. Okay, so this indicates the amount of excitation currents that should be there for up to knee point voltage. So friends, let us now understand some basics about how the knee point voltage occurs. See, this is a simple CT core and this is the primary winding. This is the secondary winding. We know that because of the some voltage induced on primary winding, there will be some flux over here because of which there will be some current induced and voltage induced in the secondary winding. But we know that for a current transformer, the secondary winding is always short circuited. But when we are talking about special protection core of the CT, 
we know that there will be some relay connected over here on the secondary winding. So we will have some current and some voltage that will be induced over here across this relay. Okay. For that, how does that voltage occur is this relay will have some internal resistance R. The leads of this relay will have some resistance and the winding, secondary winding itself will also have some internal resistance. When all these three resistance come together, there will be some current flowing through this winding because of the presence of resistance and because of the voltage that is induced from primary into the secondary. Okay, and because of that, we will have some voltage that will be induced across the secondary winding. This voltage should be only up to say knee point voltage. Okay, if there is more current flowing through this above the knee point value, then it may saturate the core. What happens if the core is saturated is based on the flux, the primary winding and secondary winding both will be completely energized and because of that no more voltage will be produced on the secondary side. So it is very important that the current flowing over here should match up to the knee point voltage level excitation current only. So we perform this test to check if the current flowing over here is that much only for the given CT. Now let's see how to perform this test. As we have seen in our previous video about basics about the current transformer, we have seen this is the primary and this is where you can get the secondary terminals on the outside. So CT terminal box looks something like this where we can get all the three cores terminals. Then we have 10 delta point and earth CT earth point. Okay. So now let us see how we were going to perform this knee point test. Let us uh, just understand some basic idea about the cores of the CT. We have three core. The CT ratio is of 1200, 600 by 111. That means it is having three cores. First one is metering core. Second is a protection core. And third is a special protection core. So we know that we will perform the knee point test on this special protection core. And we already know as in the previous videos that this are nomenclature as 1s1, 1s2, 1s3. Similarly, when we talk about special protection code, we have 3s1, 3s2 and 3s3. For this ratio, we have when we are connecting 3s1 and 3s2, the ratio connected is 600 by 1. And when we connect 3s1 and 3s3, the ratio connected is 1200 by 1. Okay. So now we will see how to perform this test. Okay. So we have this uh, inside the CT terminal box. Okay. And we have one variac. Then we have a transformer. We will require a clip on meter and a multimeter. We will connect this variac with the. As the variac is connected with the transformer, the output of this transformer will be connected to the CT terminals in the special protection core. It is 3S1 and 3S3, right? We will use a clip on meter to measure the current in milliampers that will be flowing through 3S1 and we will use multimeter to measure the voltage of this output of the transformer. So we will connect the variac with the power supply and we will see different readings will be taken for different voltage. Say we will be giving 100 volts and we will see how much milliampere current is flowing through the secondary of the CT. Then we will change the range of this voltage and go up to the knee point voltage level and check 
what milliampere excitation current we are receiving. Okay, so let's start this test. We will set this knob to 100 volt. So you can see in the multimeter it is 100 volts and when it is connected on 100 volts the excitation current you can get is 2.5 milliamperes. Now we will set it to 200 volts. It is set to 200 volts and you can see the ampere meter is showing 4.5 milliamperes. Similarly we will take one more reading. The next reading we will take is at 300 volts. So we will increase the knob voltage, variac voltage at 300 volts. You can see at 300 volts the ampere meter is showing 5.7 milliamperes. So similarly you can perform this test up to 950 volts that is the knee point voltage and you can also take a reading higher up to 10% voltage. So we have made a comparative table over here. It indicates different voltages that we have applied and the currents that we have measured. See, we started with 100 volts and we were getting 2.5 milliamperes. Similarly at 200 volts, 300 volts and we measured up to 950 volts. At 950 volts, that is the knee point voltage according to the nameplate of the CT, the current measured in milliamperes is 16.8 milliamperes. That is okay because as the nameplate indicated, IEX should be 60 milliamperes at VK by 2. Okay, at the ratio of 1200 by 1. Okay, also it is advised that you can take the perform this test at voltage levels 10% higher than knee point voltage. So it's okay to measure up to 1015, one, sorry, 1050 volts, okay, and you will get some 20.6 milliamperes that is well within the range. But uh, you should perform this test up to this point only. So these are just indicative numbers given over here, okay, and uh, you can see that if the voltage we are increasing say up to 1350, then the ampere is suddenly increasing from 55 milliamperes to 150 milliamperes that is now going the current is going inside the saturation region. So it is advised to not perform the test at this voltage levels as it may damage the CT. Right. So now let us understand it through a graph. As you can see the graph over here it is similar to the very first graph about knee point voltage that we saw, saw earlier in this video. So this is the knee point voltage that is 950 volts at 950 volts the up to 950 volts the current increasing is steady and slow but after 950 volts that is after knee point the increasing current is very high okay and this is the region of CT saturation region which may damage the core right so that is how the knee point voltage test is performed these are some basic te uh, test kits available in the market that you can use to do the knee point test on the CT so that's all for today's video. If you have any comments, you can ask in the comment section below. Keep watching our video. Thank you.